Concerning Chernobyl in Ukraine, Chernobyl's molten guts are again warming up, but scientists don't know why. They can't explain what's happening. Mike McRae, via Science Alert on Bennett Reality. Over the past five years, a sensor keeping count of neutron emissions deep within the rubble of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster has kept track of a gradual spike in activity. The rising count might be nothing. It might even drop back down again, given time. Scientists are not exactly keen on taking any chances as the potential for a runaway nuclear fission reaction in the future cannot be ruled out until we know what's going on. Unfortunately, the precise location of the decaying material beneath the debris and heavy slabs of concrete makes detailed investigation and potential fixes all the more challenging. And as reported by Science Magazine's Richard Stone, researchers in the Institute of Safety Problems for Nuclear Power Plants in Kiev, Ukraine, are yet to determine whether the noted rise in neutron heralds pending disaster or is more of a storm in a nuclear teacup. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. There are many uncertainties, ISPNPP's Maxim Savaliev told Stone. He said, but we can't rule out the possibility of an accident. In what ranks, at, as perhaps history's most notorious nuclear accident, the Unit 4 reactor at the Chernobyl complex underwent a devastating meltdown in late April 1986 following an unexpected drop in power during a key safety test. The resulting explosions of compressed steam cast a pall of radioactive material far across Europe, contributing to the premature deaths of what count, what could be a, a, a tens of thousands of people. And within the rooms and corridors of the demolished facility itself, superheated uranium fuel collected in pools mixed with molten zirconium cladding, graphite control rods, and liquefied sand, liquefied sand, yes, to produce a hellish lava that eventually solidified into monoliths of fuel-containing materials, or FCMs. Over the decades, uranium isotopes have continued to shoot off the occasional neutron from their nuclei, those that happen to get close enough to another isotope's nuclear risk upsetting their own delicate balance, driving free more neutrons. Given a high enough concentration of atoms, the chain reaction of lost neutrons can generate enormous amount of energy in a short amount of time with potentially explosive consequences. Neutrons ejected from the decaying heat of the uranium atom typically move to a little, fa a little too fast to be easily captured. All this changes when neutrons are forced to pass through certain media, such as water. Slowed down, they have a much higher chance of sticking to a nucleus and triggering its own decay. So with this in mind, it comes as little surprise that fission rates spike inside FCMs whenever they get wet. For years, huddled beneath a hastily erected sarcophagus covering for Chernobyl, referred to as the shelter, Unit 4's ruins sat semi-exposed to the elements, allowing heavy downpours to seep inside the tangled mess of collapsed concrete and old machinery, amid fears that rainwater could send fission inside the FCMs into overdrive, engineers have managed to coat most of them in a neutron-absorbing solution of gadolin gadolinium nitrate. A more robust covering was com completed over the site in November 2016. The vast structure called the New Safe Confinement NSC does a vastly better job of keeping everything dry. Yet the space beneath the old unit for a reactor that was once room 305-2 is still buzzing with neutron emissions rising slowly but significantly since the NSC was erected. Assuming it is not wet, 
it is not clear what's behind the slow rise in neutron numbers. By the reckoning of ISPNPP, it's possible this particular mix of materials has had an even easier time generating chain reactions of neutrons as it dehydrates. Exactly why and what to do about it remain pressed questions, especially as the area continues to slowly dry out over time. And given where it sits, soaked in the gadolinium nitrate could be tricky. And as it's getting a delicated, dedicated sensor up closer to the source of the neutrons beyond obstacles that might be interfering with the measurements. With emissions rising so quickly, the risk of threats in the near future seem low. Worst case scenarios would also fall short from the 1986 catastrophe. Still, given the delicate crumbling state of the FCMs and that room 3052 is thought to contain around half of the reactor's original fuel, even a small explosion could blast radioactive debris far enough to make its containment a concern. There are plans for cleanup of the fuel underway, with an interim storage facility currently awaiting a license from the Ukrainian regulator. For now, little can be done, but watch and keep on counting, hoping that in time, Chernobyl's ticking will fall quite one, quiet once again. This is by McCree Science Alert on Bended Reality. The thing is, this takes money, and Ukraine, as we know, doesn't have that money to do this. So who's going to put their hands in their pockets and help them? Because this has to do with humanity's health. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.